Once you guys got another mini PC, this mini PC has amazing performance. It's from Geekom, it's the IT series, and it's the IT13 2025 edition. This is everything you're going to get inside the box. You're going to get a nice small power adapter right here. That's 19 volts, 6.32 amps. And again, we'll take a look at the power for this particular type of mini PC once we power it. I think it's about 45 watts TDP on the CPU here. So we've got a HDMI cable right here. We've got some screws for the VESA mount and for your uh, drive bay. We also have a VESA mount here. If you want to mount this back on the monitor, you can do. You've got your warranty card here and your instruction guide. Very simple and easy to understand with pictures and text inside here as well on how to upgrade it or uh, put your drive in here if you wanted to. We have our power cable. This is a UK plug. If you're living in Europe, you will get a Europe uh, type of plug adapter here. And we have the mini PC itself. Let's take a look at the so let's take a look at the mini PC itself. Very small in design, 117 millimeters by 112 millimeters by 49.2 millimeters. On the front, we have a power button. We have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and we also have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, ports on there. One can be used for charging as well. The main chassis is made of metal, and you can see the top is made of plastic. That's because the Wi-Fi antennas are underneath the top part of the mini PC. On the side here, we do have ventilation and a Kinston lock. On the other side, we have some ventilation and our SD card reader on the side there. Let's move around to the back of the actual mini PC because that's where all the main ports are. So around the back, we have our power input there for our 19 volts. We have two HDMI 2.0 ports and two USB 4 ports, which are Type-C type connection. We have another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port on there as well. And we have a USB 2.0 port on there and, a, and an Ethernet 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on there with some ventilation at the top. Now that means you can have up to four monitor displays on this mini PC. On the bottom, you can see that's where your VESA mount is and your four screws. Let's remove these four screws so we can gain access to inside the actual device. Now this mini PC has plenty of storage options available if you need a mini PC with storage. On the base of it, you can see there's room for a two and a half inch drive bay there, which you could put up to a two terabyte SSD in there. There's also a nice heat sink on the base of it, which will keep the actual NVMe drive nice and cool as well to help dissipate heat. So if you need a mini PC to store like extra files and data, you can do with this mini PC. Some of them don't have this option, but this does, and it's a very powerful mini PC because it does have an i9 processor. We're going through the specs a little bit later on. Let's talk about the storage. So inside here, we have a Kingston one terabyte drive. You can get the two terabyte model. It can have up to two terabytes on there. This slot right here can have up to one terabyte. That's a 2242 SATA SSD storage. But the main drive is M.2 2280 PCI Express Gen 4 times 4 SSD, and that can have up to two terabytes in there as well. Inside here, we do have 32 gigabytes of RAM, and let's have a look at the make and model of this particular RAM here. It's Woo Persit, I think that's how you pronounce it, and these are two 16 gigabyte sticks in here. DDR4, uh, 3200 megahertz speed on these particular memory modules right here. So let me just put these in the unit again. And again, you can see there is a little connector there free, but if you do need a bit of extra storage as well, you can still put extra storage in here. You can upgrade the drive to a two terabyte and also have one terabyte of SSD storage in there as well. So plus you've got two terabytes on the two and a half inch drive base. So plenty of storage options in this mini PC. Now there is a Wi-Fi card in here, Wi-Fi, uh, 6E8X211. The full specs, as you can see right here, you can pause the screen and read those. We do have Bluetooth 5.2 on here, Windows 11 Pro. We also have that processor in here, which is a 13th gen Intel Core i9-13900HK, 14 cores, 20 threads with 20 megabytes of cache, up to 5.40 gigahertz. And we have that G GPU in here. We have the Iris Xe graphics on here as well with plenty of graphics power for this particular little model of mini PC. So video editing, Photoshop, uh, whether you're doing multi-screen on here, you can do no problem whatsoever. Whether you want to do some light gaming on here, you can do as well. You've got plenty of power in this mini PC for all those particular tasks. The menu 
inside the BIOS is pretty basic. You do have basic functionality inside here, which will give you some control over the actual mini PC as well, whether you want to uh, do the power mode here, you see it's set to normal, and there's some other things like uh, fan mode as well, which is set to auto, some other settings inside here, but pretty basic BIOS in this mini PC. Let's take a look at Geekbench 6. I'm going to show you some uh, simple tests here we're going to do for some benchmarks, but I also want to take a look at the temperatures and also take a look whether we get any thermal throttling. I'll tell you at the end whether we do, because I'm not going to make you watch the whole uh, benchmark process, but I'll let it start here so you can see how it performs straight away. We do have very, very good temps on this mini PC. There was no major temperature issues, no red red uh, sections popping up on the screen here. There was no thermal throttling. The main score here for the single core was 2252, and the multi-core score was 9113, uh, and that was the multi-core score. There was no thermal throttling on this. The GPU score was 14,088 for open uh, CL score on this mini PC. Let's take a look at CPU Z here as well. And we'll do a quick uh, test, stress test on the CPU here so you can take a look. But there's the main specifications for the CPU. It's a Raptor Lake, as you can see, and IT13. And it gives you all the readouts right here for the memory. And you can see it's DDR4 right there with the cache latency and clock speeds right there. And we also have 3200 megahertz speed on these SODIMs. There is the actual readout for the SPD right there. And we also have the graphics as well, which I can quickly show you right here. And we also have the bench, which I'll quickly go through and to show you the stress test here. Now I'll quickly speed this up so not to bore you to tears. I just want to see whether we get any thermal throttling at all right here when I leave it for a period of time, just to see. I'm not going to leave it for too long, but you can see there's a little bit of core power limit exceeded and also the package ring power limit exceeded, yes, right here. And that's just running CPU Z. So let's go ahead and run Jellyfish here. This is for 400 Mbps, 4K Ultra HD, HEVC, 10-bit file, and you can see silky smooth playback. So if you need this for 4K movie playback or streaming or whatever it is you want to do, you can do with this particular device. I'll quickly do a 4K stream right here so you can see it can handle this. I'll put stats for nerds on here so you can see there is no drop frames on here as well. There's four or five at the very beginning when you play the video, that's pretty normal, and then it stabilizes and you don't have any drop frames throughout, which is really good for video streaming and 4K playback, very, very good indeed. As you can see, silky smooth, no jerkiness whatsoever there on the stream. So if you need this as a 4K streaming device, you can do. The speeds on the actual drive right here, you can see it's a Kingston drive, we have in here one terabyte, the uh, reads are 4,065.36 reads and the writes are 3,199.84 uh, writes on the drive. Your 3D Mark Time Spy score is 1,833 for this particular unit. I'll do a quick graphics uh, test here on 3D Mark as well. The Night Raid score was 17,097 for the uh, score for the GPU right here. Now, of course, we don't have any dedicated graphics card here. We do have on board graphics, but you can play some sort of games on here. I just did a quick gaming test here just to show you some light gaming that you can do on this particular mini PC. It can handle these no problem at all. So you can have a bit of fun on these on some games as well. Just be realistic when it comes to uh, gameplay experience and what you're trying to expect from a mini PC of this nature because at the end of the day, it is a mini PC and it doesn't have a dedicated GPU, but it can play games and it can play more sophisticated games as well, at slightly higher resolutions as well. So depending on what you want this for, you can do some research and have a look. If you want to see a much more in-depth gaming test on this, let me know in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to make that video for you. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Let's have a quick look at the pricing for this. So they have two flavors. They have a one terabyte SSD version and a two terabyte SSD version. You can see 649 and 699 is what the pricing is for this in the UK. 
It does have a 30 day money back guarantee here and a three year warranty on these mini PCs. They ship from the UK. Now, for full transparency, uh, Geekom has sent this out for a review. No one is reviewing this video before it's released. All opinions are my own and no money has been paid for this review. Anyway, but that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate it. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.